Welcome everyone to Ethereum Cat Herders meeting 73. I just have shared agenda in the chat for people to refer to. Um, before we get into the agenda items, we have someone uh, new to this call. He is generally uh, going by Alpha Key on the Discord channel. So I would like to invite him to kind of introduce yourself to the group. Yeah, sure. So yeah, my name is Mike and um, I've been interested again in Ethereum uh, since early this year. I started learning about uh, on-chain data, which was provided through Glassnode. And um, yeah, I've become like really interested in, uh, in DeFi and like how to make that space really transparent and open and um, take advantage of like the, the plug and play nature of DeFi. Um, I have probably like six years doing like DevOps type work. I really enjoy building things for people. I'm not necessarily gonna be the guy that's writing the actual software, but I, though I could do that, uh, I prefer writing things uh, to people's specifications um, and automating things. Um, I'm just starting to dip my toes a little bit in machine learning, though I feel it's kind of like mm, not always super useful because ultimately it's everything is controlled by humans, right? So uh, yeah, I'm uh, starting out uh, my contributions to the Ethereum project um, by actually uh, having an automated way to review the Ethereum proposals. Um, I was actually going through EIP 1559 this morning and I noticed that the, um, the sections that are in EIP one, some of those are actually missing in EIP 1559. So I think there's a, 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 a big opportunity to improve like sort of the workflow for uh, capturing the Ethereum proposals. And yeah, I'm hoping to contribute a, a, a good amount to that. That's pretty interesting. I have seen you being active on Discord as well as on the GitHub repository. Thank you for all your contribution. Yeah, that's nice. And we have one more participant. Uh, she is also from the uh, agenda that we, we got from the uh, EIP apprenticeship meeting, um, Shubhangi. Shubhangi, if you would like to take the opportunity and introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, having me in the uh, wonderful community. Uh, I've been interested in Ethereum for quite some time, but I recently got uh, was available and I was very excited to contribute. And uh, I've been able to um, help out a little bit with the EIP um, editing, but I'm also hoping to contribute in other non-technical areas. For example, uh, I'll be talking about the ECH uh, year-end video later um, in the meeting. And I have a background in international law and academics. And uh, a few years back, I used to hold uh, uh, meetup groups regarding blockchain and Ethereum in uh, uh, South Korea. And currently, I'm still based in East Asia. So anyway, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been great working with you in the past two weeks. I hope that we continue working together for a very, very long time. Yeah, welcome. That's great. Thank you. All right. Um, let's get into the agenda items. Uh, the item number zero here because that's not something usual, but it happened. It's an incident and uh, we need to uh, report it. So I have added an incident report uh, to the ECH GitHub uh, about what happened with our Discord. Um, so like in summary, on Friday night EST time, um, our server got hacked and uh, we could not get back to our server. Um, it was late because it was Friday and uh, I wasn't aware that something like this has happened. Only late when I received notification from a couple of people that uh, they are not able to receive, uh, uh, they are not able to access the server. 
we started looking into it. We filed a report to the Discord support group and all. And uh, the sequence of events I have described in this incident report, thanks to many cat herders who helped set up this new Discord. So now we have been interacting with each other uh, with the help of this new server. We didn't want that community should be left out in absence of communication, especially during the upgrade time. So uh, thank you very much to everyone who has supported. And the detailed report is attached to the agenda. Anyone interested can go through that. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can ask me now or later on too. Have we tweeted out the incident report? Um, I have reported it just morning and I am preparing to report the newsletter today, maybe after this call okay. or the um, EIP call that we have after that. And with that, I'm going to do all uh, like uh, yeah. sharing it with the community. Okay, fine. We should, yeah, we should. Sorry, I think my audio. About Sorry. It. I, okay. I, feel, I feel we probably should. So, so yeah, we, we could talk about that. Though. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to share this report on the newsletter that will be sent out today. All right, uh, that's about that. Moving on to the first item of the agenda, that is network upgrade. So we are expecting Arrow Glacier in less than two days, I can say. We have EF blog post and the cat herders blog post. I am assuming that most of us may have updated the node, though we saw it yesterday that there were about 35% uh, nodes. Those were not upgraded. So people, if you are running a node and uh, you want to be a part of the network, please upgrade the node as soon as possible. And the link to the client version that you should be upgrading to is available in the Ethereum Foundation blog post. I have shared the link in this agenda. About the uh, uh, merge Kintsuki. Kintsuki is the latest uh, testnet that we are having for the merge. Right now it is in the dev devnet stage, like uh, it's for the developers. Uh, who are build, uh, building the client only, but uh, um, it has been recently announced that there would be a public testnet for infrastructure provider and uh, other people who want to experiment with this uh, new merge. And that would be somewhere around 14th and uh, 15th of the of December. Uh, it will be available. And uh, we will have uh, Paritosh, who is the mastermind behind all this Kinstuki devnet talk about uh, setting up the testnet. Uh, I suppose the meeting is planned on PEEP and E on December 15th at 18.30 UTC. So if is, anyone is interested in running the merge testnet and, and or participate in testing in any possible way, please reach out to Paritosh or you can also join us in the meeting so we can have your questions get answered there. The next item is ECH update. Um, on ECH website side, uh, we have updated with the latest link to the merge related resources. As we mentioned earlier, we have a dedicated page to the merge. And uh, obviously the new Discord link has also been updated on the Ethereum Cat Herders website. Unfortunately, I don't see anyone from the ECH engineering team, so I'm going to skip it for now. And uh, we'll move on to the next sub item, it's Cat Blazers. Uh, William has uh, recently shared Cat Blazers post. William, if you have any more update to share. I don't have, um... oh wait, my audio might be having, well I say that. It takes a bit of time for it to kind of, you know, but um, I, like you mentioned, to make a post detailing what I was doing over November. Uh, the one, one thing that I mentioned there is some of the things that we might be looking for that might be able to help us. Um, anyone who might be able to help with um, 
podcasting like skills and like kind of the editing and things like that would probably be of great use to us. Um, I know I had at least one other thing on my mind also, but it's slipping right now. Um, as always, if there's anybody who has anything that they'd like to contribute or any, like anyone who thinks that there might be some way that I'm able to help them, feel free to reach, to reach out. Um, my Twitter and Discord are on any of the posts that I've put on Medium or on Mirror. And I think that's probably about it for me. And anything else you think I should specifically be mentioning, Pooja? No, I think uh, that's about it. And uh, thanks for the great post. It provides a lot of information that what team you are working with. And if anyone is interested to contribute to that particular section, please feel free to reach out to William Shah. Um, the next sub item is EIP Insight. Um, we have shared the monthly report for the month of uh, November that is added here in the agenda link. And in December, so far, we have one new EIP that is EIP 4488, Transaction Call Data Gas Cost Reduction with Total Call Data Limit. This was introduced um, last week by Vitalik Buterin and it is under discussion to be considered for uh, upcoming uh, upgrades. Other than that, uh, uh, there are a few changes to status. One EIP, EIP 1967 has been moved to review. EIP 4345, it has been moved to last call. There are five EIPs, those are moved to starting by the bot. Two proposals are uh, in unstagnant state, uh, the EIP 634 and EIP 2569. And one major change that is there for the EIP one, is uh, removing the bibliography section from the EIP one. So uh, in the last EIP AP meeting, we discussed that uh, it is a section that is kind of obsolete and we are not reusing the link in the uh, document. So um, I have updated the text with appropriate link. And finally, we decided to remove this bibliography section from the EIP one. All these will be added to the EAP Insight for December. I'm hoping to uh, publish that very soon. Moving on to PEEP and EEP. Um, we have quite a few uh, PEEP and EEP planned for the month of uh, December. The first one is uh, tomorrow, uh, EAP 4345, a difficulty bomb delay to June 2022, uh, that is with uh, uh, Thomas J. Rush. He is the co-author and he has very well explained how we calculated the difficulty bomb in a blog post. So it would be interesting to learn more about the calculations of these difficulty bomb and uh, why the Ethereum developer decided to push it till June then uh, May 2022, which was like uh, on the initial proposal. Following this, we have um, the secrets of EIP editing with Matt Gnett on 14, the merge testnet uh, that I mentioned with Paritosh and Proto on December 15. And there is one another EIP, very important for merge, that is EIP 4399, Suppliant Difficulty Opcode with Random. Uh, we will be talking with Mikhail Kalinin, the author of the proposal, how that is implemented in uh, clients. So far, anyone has any question? All right, this is just the update section. So I think I can keep going. We have a notes available for all coder meeting one to seven and EIP IP meeting 45. Um, we are waiting on the uh, notes for the consensus meeting 77, but I hope that we would be having it real soon. Um, 
for all the resources who are working on documenting notes, it's a gentle reminder that we would like to have the notes up and ready within the three days, first three days of the meeting. And if, if something is like a little longer, uh, we expect that to have it within the first five days. So it, we can make it available to community to follow along with the meetings. The ECH newsletter, I'll be sharing it right after this meeting. So uh, it will be going into your inbox if you have already subscribed to Ethereum Cat Herders Medium. If not, then you can always find it on the Medium. There was this merge community call last week, and uh, I am hoping to get its uh, notes by today, end of the day. about the EIP editor apprenticeship meeting. The second meeting is planned for today, right after this call. So anyone who has been to earlier meeting and they have started contributing or they are willing to contribute, have questions, please, please, please join the meeting, which is right after this meeting at uh, 1600 UTC. There are a couple of breakout room announcements. Uh, all these meetings are added to Ethereum protocol calendar. So if you can subscribe to Ethereum protocol calendar, these meetings will automatically be added to your Google calendar as of course. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, we have MEV breakout room and EIP 4444 breakout room. Both are scheduled on Thursday. That's about uh, ECH updates. Uh, anyone else has anything to add here? All right, moving on to the next section. Uh, we have started this section to keep on adding new things, new tasks that we are undertaking, or if anyone has any new suggestion. Um, I, I don't know if we have anyone on the call to talk about open Ethereum client support. I, I see Ronin here on the call. Ronin, I don't know if you have a microphone or if you would like to provide an update on open Ethereum client support. Hello together. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. All yeah, right. we can hear um, The latest news I got is that Igor Barinov and his crew are preparing all updates uh, for the next few versions and upcoming uh, updates to, to Ethereum mainnet and to implement them into the code base and to release further on uh, Mac and Linux versions. The Windows versions seem to have stopped as well as all other applications which were normally bundled, uh, but I did not have the chance to reach them personally because they, uh, they have to keep their thing with the Gnosis chain and so on and so on. There's some politics behind it. I don't want to touch in and I don't have the time to, to, to get. I am reaching out since, since I know that they're releasing new versions and I uh, repeat it also uh, to offer assistance in any way, but they did not respond yet. Uh, but I know that they have also supporters from uh, some other crew and they are about to gather and to join and to co-work. Uh, I got from both groups uh, no recent updates, but uh, there is ongoing development with each chain, uh, with, with, with each, with XDAI and Ethereum, for sure. This is what, what Mycelium, uh, the other guy from the Mycelium uh, team told me that they want to offer uh, support for this and they are implementing and if they have trouble, I was invited to join and to review any, any incoming PRs and I will do as, as visible. Uh, we don't all don't know how it has been continued until Igor is answering uh, what his plans are. That's it for me. Well, thank you so much, Ronin, for the updates. I am aware that uh, Open Ethereum is being supported for the Arrow Glacier update, and we have added the uh, client version on the announcement channel. If you are running a node on Open Ethereum, you can upgrade to that client version that would at least support you till this network upgrade 
that we are expecting in uh, next two days. Moving on, uh, the next item is ECH earlier in video. Um, we're trying to create a video for Ethereum cat herders. I know we have Shibhangi on the call. Uh, she can talk about it. Hello. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Um, Hi, uh, so for the ECH here and video, we have uh, uh, two documents that, that we can use as material for the video. Uh, one is a ECH short video outline, and uh, we have some accompanying pictures and media to um, flesh out what kind of imagery we want for the video. Uh, we have been working with uh, Bankless DAO, uh, the team from Bankless DAO regarding um, uh, creating a not just this video, but maybe future um, uh, videos for uh, ECH. And um, it seems that um, uh, it's still, we haven't decided uh, how to move forward with them, but in any case, we want to make a short video um, in, the, in the next few weeks that can kind of encapsulate what ECH has been doing in the past uh, year. And uh, we are going to look at some other, um, uh, some other ways in which we can maybe at least have some, um, uh, some media content that we can publish by the first week of uh, January. Um, maybe it won't be exactly the uh, a long three minute long video, but we are looking at various ways in which we can publish like a short year and um, media content about what ECH did this year. Uh, if anyone is interested and has the um, bandwidth energy to uh, help out with making the year end video, that would be great if you, you can contact me on Discord. Uh, we are talking about basically a three a two to three minute uh, video with most of the content uh, material that we will use already prepared. Um, so please, if you have any um, uh, ideas or you would like to contribute, please reach out to me and that would be great. How should we have, how can we reach out to you? Uh, you can reach me on Discord. My um, uh, my username is MetaGo, so you can uh, contact me on Discord, and we can uh, I I can send you the files. Awesome! Thanks a bunch. Looking Thank you. Forward. Thank you for that update. And uh, I see the next item is B star naming, uh, which I have added uh, like in the last minute. So if you can't see it in your agent item, please refresh it. <laughs> Um, I know you have been working with the team. Uh, would you like to provide some more uh, update on that too? I'm sorry, are you, uh, I can't hear you. Um... Uh, the B star naming uh, with the Ethereum Foundation team uh, that they are looking for consensus layer uh, code name. Ah uh, yes, uh, I reached out to Xiao Wei uh, on, um, um, and she was able to contact us, and she's really interested in uh, creating more momentum for uh, people people's feedback to choose a star name for um, uh, for merge and for later upgrades. And I'm going to do a, a Reddit post related to that and. Uh, ECH has all, I think Pooja already uh, posted a link on Twitter and uh, she's deciding, uh, she and I think Pooja, we're talking about whether we should have a POAP voting or we should have a breakout room related to uh, discussing um, the final decision. And if we could get some feedback from the ECH community as well, uh, if you think uh, POAP voting is, uh, is a good way to go forward? Or do you think a breakout room would be better for making a decision regarding the star naming system? 
Oh, so uh, that's something we're discussing right now, and your input would be oh, appreciated. So thank you for that. I just have shared the Twitter link in which we have uh, invited community participation, uh, where uh, where we can collect some names and. Uh, the idea here is to go ahead with either poor voting or, or the decision by the developers that's still under discussion. But uh, if you have a name that you would want to uh, be used as code name for this upgrade, please add it over there. All right, uh, the uh, next item listed here is funding. Uh, Gitcoin round 12 has started and we have received uh, over 130 when I checked it was last. Let me quickly check it. Oh my God, we have received, contrib uh, received contributions from 199 contributors. I'm so happy to see this number increasing every day. It suggests that we are loved by users in this Ethereum ecosystem. Really appreciate that. And I would like to give a shout out to um, one specific donor, Ivan Martinez, for the biggest contribution of 500 die. Although for this kind of round, we expect a dollar or two, I mean, a die or two, because that helps us getting matching funds, but a contribution of 500 die is great. Thank you so much, Ivan, for that. On the other hand, I have been working with the Moloch team for the um, funding for the next year. And uh, we have our proposal live on the on-chain voting. Voting is uh, active for next six days. So if anyone listening to this meeting call is a Moloch member and they would like to support Ethereum CAD headers, please go ahead and vote for us. That's all about funding. Uh, the next item is uh, discuss and close the ECH GitHub issues and PRs. Uh, on funding side, I believe we have uh, finished the transaction for all the open issues. So I suppose the second uh, confirmation went through this morning and I have to just close the issues. And on PM side, I'm not sure if we have anyone new. I don't think I don't. Yeah. That's almost close to the end of the meeting. I see uh, Tim Beko uh, joining the call. Welcome, Tim. So. Hey. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I mean, uh, I know we wanted to discuss the incident report. So I have uh, filed this uh, incident report just morning. And there we have described the sequence of events that took place and how we are with the new server. Last night, I received a notification from the Discord team that it's unfortunate, but uh, a Discord staff does not interfere with the individual server management. and. Uh, it seems like the server is deleted, so there is no way to restore that. In the report, I have tried to add the snapshot of like what gave us the impression that it is still online. The image that I have added there was post the incidents, which shows that 394 are still online. So I was in a hope that I will get it back, but unfortunately it doesn't look that way. So maybe we will have to proceed in the direction of getting uh, our users directed to the new server. Yeah, that makes sense. Is the incident report on the cat herders GitHub? That's correct. And I'm also adding that in today's newsletter. I'm going to uh, publish a newsletter out today. And the well, link is added to the agenda for today's got meeting. Got it. Thank you. Uh, I know um, this is like a very unfortunate. Even we lost a lot of uh, members. But I hope that uh, with everyone's uh, help we can spread the word out for the new discord server and uh, yes for security i have enabled 2fa which i was missing bad on my part but i look forward to you know uh, more improvement suggestions to make this community a safer place for all our users 
Yeah, I think one thing I would add is like uh, for anyone on the multi-sig, uh, if you have a hardware wallet to use it, um, because that would suck more than the Discord. Uh, so yeah, that's probably the other kind of low-hanging fruit. Um, yeah. I'm loath to mention this on a Zoom call that's being recorded, but yes, I'm on a hardware wallet. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying something, Tim? No, that's it. Um, yeah, and I guess, yeah, do you have uh, in the instant document like screenshots of, like you said, it was like a, a message, a link that you clicked or something? Um, no. If there's any, no, okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has it because I was just uh, closing, I was just deleting, but I didn't realize until I am assuming a couple of hours when I got this notification on my uh, Telegram. Right. It might also just been that somebody got your password, right? They, it, it might be that the two things are just uh, they're, they're not yeah. related. Yeah. 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 yeah I, either of it, because I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's something that I couldn't have ever imagined. I was running three servers and I lost all of them. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. No, it, it sucks. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah. It was that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. New server, I guess. Yeah, that's the new way forward. I would uh, invite more participation as like, you know, uh, active uh, moderators for this group. I think that would be helpful. And obviously we have done the 2FA and um, I'm, I have other suggestions that I've received and I would like to implement them all to make it a more secure server. All right, that's about it. And moving on to the last item here. Uh, that's our meeting notes. I'm just trying to quickly check if we have any action item from the last meeting. Um, uh, no, I don't find that section here. But uh, I think that would be all for today. Uh, I'll recheck the document. It was a last minute entry, so <laughs> I might have to review the entire notes one more time. And uh, thank you, by the way, Ken, for submitting it before the meeting. And I think that's it for today's meeting, that uh, the items, those were listed on the agenda. Although I see a couple of more items on the ECH Discord that people were interested in discussing. Don't know if anyone has anything. I do. Bring as a yeah, fact. please. Um, I was interested in bringing up as a conversation something I've been talking a little bit with Kucha about. Right now, the ECH uses a medium for our blog posts, which has, I mean, the useful kinds of analytics and metrics that are useful for knowing engagement and things like that. Um, I was wondering what level of uh, like what, what the thoughts, yeah, <laughs> Texas Farmer has it. I, I was wondering what the thought of the thoughts of those in the ECH right now and also of the wider community that, that might listen to this would be about maybe moving to something more Web3 centric like Mirror. Um, whereas before you needed to kind of win the right race in order to be able to publish on Mirror. And while that would still be useful, at the same time, Mirror publishing is now open. Um, and personally, I would like to see the ECH move more towards kind of dog fooding Web3 and using Web3 tools for what we can when there's not a significant disadvantage to doing so. Um, the big concern is that we would lose analytics and the ability to kind of zone in on what's working and what isn't. Uh, but on the bright side, it would be more Web3. There's also the ability to release simultaneously on both or to use one as the primary. But I was really interested in kicking off a conversation about that and maybe seeing where that would go. I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah, the one thing I would recommend is uh, not using Mirror to save drafts of articles. I've It's still a new product and I've had problems in the past where like my drafts didn't save. So I would just draft everything, something else and then post it into Medium when it's ready. 
uh, uh, sorry, the mirror when it's ready. But uh, yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea. Cool. It happens to be I have tested out the import thing, like importing articles in from Medium, and it actually works surprisingly well. I was expecting it to be a big mess. Uh, any of my reports, the Cat Plays or Chronicles, I've ported over so that they're also in Mirror, in addition to kind of like a primary listing in Medium. Yeah, and I think if you're going to move, like if people agree we should move, uh, it's probably better to just use Mirror so that like people kind of migrate there. Like you don't need to migrate the old content, but like to only post the new content on Mirror or something. So there's only like one official blog. I'm, I'm all for it. If the community is into it, I believe it. I, I jump into Mirror personal. I don't want, like, you know, if Fuja doesn't want to lose the analytics or if there's other people who are worried about other parts of that, uh, then, you know, I wouldn't want to take that away. Like, I definitely don't think we should make a, like, make a decision right here, right now. Uh, but, like, I, I'm at the very least interested in at least starting a conversation about it. Yeah, I think it makes sense uh, because more people are moving towards Mirror. Um, uh, yeah, as William as well described my concerns about the analytics and if that is being taken care of or we have, we are okay with it. I personally don't mind. So I'd, I'd say let's leave it. I, I wouldn't want to make a decision this fast. Let's leave it for like two weeks. Maybe we'll revisit it in the next. Yeah. That makes sense. I can add it as a particular item so people are aware of it and they can have their uh, due diligence done and come, come back and share more thoughts on it. Cool. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Really good suggestion. Thanks. Indeed. Thank you so much, William. All right. Uh, so that uh, is all. For today, I suppose, unless anyone have to bring up anything. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. We have another call right on top of the hour for the EIP apprenticeship. Uh, if you're around and interested to learn more about EIP editing, please do join us over there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today here. Have a good Thanks, day. Thanks, David. Oh, thank you. Pooja. See you. Thanks, Pooja.